tornado warning now. So here's our policy here at Weather Watch 12. It's our job to keep you guys safe. We're going to stay on this. This is for Walworth County. This goes until 445. So a tornado warning. Now it's radar indicated, but I want you, if you're in this polygon, which includes Elkhorn, which includes areas up to at least parts of McQuanago, uh, I want you to make sure that you're taking shelter right now. Again, this is a tornado warning that goes until 445. We're going to do a lot of different things here over the next half hour to 40 minutes or so to kind of make sure that we keep you guys understanding what's happening inside of this storm and we'll keep a close eye on it. I also want to get a live look outside again from Delavan because this really does come close to showing where the uh, greatest circulation is. It's not far at all from where our camera is located and so a live look outside. That's the water tower in Delavan. We'll go back to this a lot as we're looking out to the west, a little west-northwest from our camera located there at Lake Lawn Resort. And so that kind of gives us a really good vantage point on what's happening there with the storm as it starts to move in. Uh, also bring you down, let's bring you in closer to this storm. And again, this is affecting Walworth County. Again, this is the tornado warning that continues until 445. Richmond, you're likely seeing some uh, hail right now. There's been some large hail out of this over Rock County. We had uh, hail up to an inch and a half in diameter. So it certainly has caused some issues already. Let's put this into motion. We'll watch as this makes its way. It's moving northeast at about 30 miles per hour. This is the area, notice that we've got a little bit of a hook echo in there. That's oftentimes kind of a precursor or kind of a good idea that we would have at least some rotation, the potential for a tornado happening here. This is just north of Darien. This is going to get really close to Delavan. Let's kind of dissect this storm. We'll stop it here and then we'll bring you inside to show you what's going on uh, with the winds. The great thing about Doppler radar, we can really kind of get inside of a storm and see what's happening in there. We do that in multiple different ways. So really strong winds here in Richmond. This is outside of the area where there's likely the greatest rotation. So we'll watch, wouldn't be surprised. It might have multiple areas where it's, I don't see anything where we look at the different colors. You're wondering, well, what in the world's going on here? Uh, red is moving away, green is toward the radar. The radar sits up right on the line between Waukesha County and Jefferson County in Sullivan. And so it's a, got a really good vantage point inside of this storm showing what's happening here. I'll also bring in the hail and we'll talk about the different things. So pretty big hail right now. Again, not surprised in Richmond. Uh, this is western sections of Walworth County. So hail is certainly an issue inside of this storm as well. But let's bring it back out to radar. This is the part, this is an interesting little appendage that we're watching here as it moves through. So far, no reports that this is on the ground. This is radar indicated, but that doesn't mean I don't want you taking shelter in these areas. Let's run a storm track on the worst part of the storm and and kind of that area here, we'll do two different ones. We'll start it from this area. This is moving north, east, northeast at about 30 miles per hour. So this extends out, bring this off here. We'll do that one more time so we'll be able to see what's going on. Uh, we'll take those, this part off. There we go. And now we'll do a, a little storm track on that same system that we were just talking about as it makes its way to the east northeast at about 30 miles per hour. So Delavan Darien High School, it's coming in the next couple of minutes. I want you taking shelter in Delavan, even though this is just, it's just north of you where this is, I still think it's a good idea. Take shelter in Delavan, take shelter in Elkhorn. That's one of the areas that is of concern. And then another one of the areas is the area where we've had that really big hail moving through Richmond. This one's heading towards East Troy, would be getting into East Troy at about 438 into Hart Prairie at 421. This is very rural part of Walworth County, but nonetheless, I want everybody to take it seriously. If you're in this area, uh, you need to be taking shelter. What does that mean? Where should you be going? Well, let's kind of run over that again with our tornado safety. This is what our job is to make sure that we're giving you the latest information on what's happening, where you need to be going. Uh, of, again, that warning goes until uh, 445 for Walworth County. Where should you be in case the tornado warning? The innermost room and the lowest level of your home. If you have a basement, 
I want you in the basement. Stay away from the windows. I know this sounds kind of silly. Get a grab a bicycle helmet and, and closed toed shoes. If you have boots, that's even better. In case your house or apartment would get hit, we want to make sure that you're in the best place. This would be where you want to go. If you hear the tornado coming, we want you inside the bathtub, put something over the top of you. You want to have as many walls between you and the outside world to keep you and your family safe as this moves in. Again, at this point, it's just radar indicated. I'm going to go back in and we're going to kind of dissect that storm a little bit more as we take you inside the storm itself. We'll show you the different velocity products here. What stands out pretty quickly is this area right here. That's where we're seeing some pretty strong winds uh, just to the east. Now you can see the latest update coming in there. Uh, this is kind of hard to decipher though. I'm not seeing strong rotation one area right next to another. That's what we would be looking for is that you'd look for the two different colors right next to each other. That I have not seen, but let's, uh, let's put this in motion for you. You can watch as this Wind really ramps up. Where's this heading toward? Pretty close to East Troy. If you're in East Troy, you need to be taking shelter right now. If you know anybody in East Troy, give them a quick call. Say, hey, they're on the air right now. They're talking about this storm heading towards you in East Troy. Pay really close attention in McQuantico as well. If this storm does hold together, it would be moving in your direction. A lot of different things working uh, kind of for this to be a tornado, and a lot of things will work against it when this moves a tiny bit more to the north. And I'll explain that coming up in just a bit. Let's uh, get a look at the temperatures, because this is part of the story of what's happening here in southeastern Wisconsin. Warm front has made its way all the way into Racine, as well as Kenosha counties and Walworth County. But then it has stopped. Look at all the other temperatures here. And then the winds out of the east, keeping it cooler in Racine, much cooler here in Milwaukee. And so by the time these storms try to move a little bit more to the north, they're going to struggle in the environment because the environment is not conducive to see tornado producing storms. Now we could still get hail even into the metro area. If you're in Waukesha, you're in Milwaukee, you still need to be on guard for the possibility of severe weather. I just don't see any way that we'd have tornado warnings though for you because that warm front is where this is is happening and it's spinning, helping things spin right along that warm front. Dew point, this is a measure of how much moisture is in the air. Our dew point in Milwaukee is 39. That's not conducive to tornado producing storms, but this can be with those dew points into the mid 50s. Normally we'd have it a little bit higher than that, but it's still, we've got the moisture that has pooled in this area. That's where the warm front is located. And so that's where we're getting the spin that's happening inside of that storm. Again, let's go back to regular radar here and we'll, uh, we'll talk about where this storm is, where it's going. Uh, and uh, where it's gonna be heading next. That tornado warning, again, you can see it on your screen there, continues until uh, 445 in those same areas. Got a nice little appendage here. We'll get another look right now, by the way. We'll take you out to Delavan, uh, live look outside, again, from our camera located at Lake Lawn Resort. Uh, this is looking to the northwest right now. I'm going to take this off the screen so you get a much better view of everything that's happening here. I'm going to see if we can see anything uh, in terms of any lowering. I don't see much of the way of cloud lowering, maybe a little bit here. Uh, again, this is the water tower. If you're curious, I-43 is just on the other side of this. Uh, and so that's what we're watching. This storm is kind of cruising right up that same area. And so we'll continue to watch this pretty closely. Uh, as these storms again are going to move eh, pretty quickly northeasterly at about 30 miles per hour. But it's great to have this camera vantage point to kind of see what's going on. We'll look for any lowering. We'll look for any kind of spin. You'll look for funnel clouds. Clearly not seeing anything here uh, that would make me worry that we're seeing something that's of the immediate happening uh, in Delavan. But I do want you, if you're in Delavan, you should be taking shelter now. It's just north of you that we will uh, be worried about seeing a little bit of additional uh, development. So here we go, watching the radar. Again, this continues to, it's a northeasterly movement at 30 miles per hour. Couple of different things that we're watching inside. We've had some big hail on this uh, that is rolling through Richmond. Wouldn't be surprised if that was golf ball sized hail. Notice little purple shades in here. Again, this is a very rural part of Walworth County. Lots of farmland in here. Uh, 
and that's going to be heading towards Highway 12, working its way towards Highway 20 and East Troy. Then we've got this additional area down to the south. That's kind of where we've got closer to the warm front. It's hard to say exactly where that warm front has ended up, but it's pretty much somewhere in Walworth County, and that's adding a little bit more spin to the atmosphere so we can see, okay, this is why the warning was issued. So let's go back in and we'll, uh, I'm gonna show you the, the hail first of all. We'll look at where the hail is at its biggest right now. And again, moving out of Richmond, those deep purple shades, this is heading towards LaGrange. That's gonna be, again, if you're in these areas, I want you in shelter. Hopefully you got your car in the garage, if you got a garage, otherwise you may, some of these areas may get some hail damage out of this. Uh, and let's go back and take a look where we are still watching the velocity product and uh, seeing really strong winds here, especially just to the north of Elkhorn. This again is headed towards East Troy, those stronger winds almost uh, to Highway 12 right now. And then also watching this area where we've seen that little appendage going on down there to see if we've got any issues there. Uh, Gino Recchi is uh, joining me right now as well. He's at the weather pod. And Gino, uh, what's the latest on your end? Yeah, I mean, we've been looking at some of the uh, storm reports coming in here. Not a whole lot of activity at the moment as it moves into Walworth County. We've been seeing a bit of that rotation, as you mentioned. It's crazy crazy how quickly that initial rotation has moved into uh, Wisconsin first died out and how quickly it ramped up. Uh, there's been reports of some funnel clouds coming in here from the Walworth County Sheriff's Office. Uh, trying to take a look actually even with the uh, Delvin camp perhaps maybe to move it around by chance uh, if you moved it around earlier. Uh, just taking a look across parts of the screen seeing if we could get any of the little bit of that uh, shelf cloud type of action. Uh, still a little bit of that rotation clearly being dictated on that radar depiction as we have that kind of hook echo, that classic hook echo just north of Delavan as that storm continues to move up to the northeast. And as it continues to move up, we'll see how it continues to interact with that warm front. Is it going to continue to have that rotation or is it going to start to fall apart a little bit as it continues Absolutely. closer towards that Milwaukee air metro area. Obviously, that would be great news. That's what we're hoping for at the moment. Uh, but let, right, like I mentioned right now, Mark, uh, as for any additional storm reports, um, the National Weather Service just mentioned here, um, you know, likely the organization is to uh, position itself uh, kind of along the front aspect of the uh, surface front. So, uh, you know, it's right along that boundary layer, Mark, uh, that we've been watching out for with these storms. So it'll be interesting to see what happens as we head uh, further uh, north into uh, the afternoon and evening. Yeah, absolutely, Gino. I appreciate it. And uh, it was interesting seeing the lightning that uh, was on there as well. I haven't even really mentioned that. There's a lot of lightning. I know it's always a temptation to go outside and see, all right, let's see what's going on. Uh, if you are, though, in the midst of this, now, regardless of tornado, and again, I'm not seeing anything that stands out to me because there's, you got to have those greens and the reds really right next to one another, and we're not seeing that. But we are still getting strong winds even without that. There'll be probably uh, some wind damage here heading towards Highway 12. This, again, is working towards East Troy. If you're in East Troy, just want you to be in the basement if you can. If you're in Elkhorn, same kind of story here because we're watching different little areas of what is happening. We'll get a live look at Delavan again, and uh, we're looking to the northwest when we get a, li a live look at this. So it's kind of a, a certainly an ominous-looking sky out there right now. So we're just starting to see the rain moving in. This is uh, looking west northwest and uh, yeah never like to see all the cars that are in an area where we've got a tornado warning. Uh, you just would like to be in a place of safety. Uh, again basement if you got it, lowest level of your home. If you're in that warning area, again, that tornado warning goes until, for much of Walworth County, goes until uh, 445. So well, just watch, I'll give this a second more to see if we can see anything that's uh, kind of standing out uh, with the, any kind of lowering. Nothing too bad right now, uh, but let's get back out to radar and we'll take a look where we do have the stronger part of this storm. What, what stands out so much is clearly this area right here. That's where we're seeing some strong winds. Also watching where, as Gina was mentioning, that little appendage. We'll go back to regular uh, radar, just looking at where it's picking up on the rain itself. 
And we had for a while, a little bit there. Gino, back to you real quick. Uh, uh, Mark, uh, can you throw up that Delavan cam? Uh, Absolutely. Because I just moved the camera a little bit around, and I'm not sure if we do see that little wall cloud feature uh, that is moving in here. Actually, you might have to take a full screen. Let's out. take so a full jump, screen yeah, jump, real quick, and then Mark. we'll bring back uh, Delavan, and then we'll, uh, yeah. we'll, we'll talk our, our way through this. All right, so let's head back outside live. And, uh, again, Delavan. Southwestern sections of Walworth County. Oh, I've seen what you're seeing now. Yeah, yeah. There you so go. You, you can Thank you, Gino. Absolutely. Yeah, there's that wall cloud and yeah. a little bit of that funnel. Um, yeah, watching that close. Here we go. Right. All right. If you're at Lake Lawn Resort right now, you need to be in shelter because this is kind of heading right toward you. No, I don't see any rotation here, but we've got this lowering. We would watch to see. Oftentimes, you'll see some spin coming out of that. You could see a funnel cloud. We're going to stay on this for a while, actually, because this is uh, rather interesting to, uh, to kind of check out what's happening down there. We'll see if there's any additional lowering. Here's the thing. This is right near the warm front. The warm front itself is just enough impetus to get these storms to spin. When they get farther north, as they get closer to the metro area, they're going to have a harder time. Now, a wall cloud itself, it will be this lowering of the cloud, and it, the whole thing will be spinning counterclockwise. And again, out of that area, this is where you'd have big updraft in here, uh, out of that area, you would see, at times, funnel clouds appear, possibly tornado as well. So again, it's hard to say exactly how far away this is from the camera, but nonetheless, this really kind of gives you an idea of why that warning was issued, because we're seeing these, these lowerings, and there's been a lot of storm chasers that are on these storms that reported uh, a lot of different funnel clouds, reported a few touchdowns of some smaller tornadoes. Uh, but again, watching this, is, uh, it, it's kind of fascinating. So you can see right behind this, you're already seeing the skies clearing out. But we have to get through. we got to get this through the area. Hopefully we don't have any touchdowns out of this, but it kind of gives you an idea of how these storms are really coming together. The ingredients are there. We've got temperatures that made it up to 70 in our southern counties. We've got the dew point temperatures in the mid-50s to around 60 right near the Illinois line, and that's not far away from where we are right now. But this is its kind of a fascinating uh, look at what's going on here. Uh, and Gino, break in sure. if you need anything, because I just yeah. want to sit, sit here as long right. as possible. But uh, – because it looks kind of cool. I know. Uh, I mean, it, it seemed that just moments ago we had a little bit of that funnel cloud that uh, was starting to drop down and kind of uh, receded back up uh, into the uh, wall cloud base. Um, but it's interesting because that storm's getting further and further north of that warm front. That warm front is really what caused that rotation to spark off. So will this storm hold itself together or will it start to weaken? That's the question. Yeah, absolutely. And as it moves out of Walworth County, it's going to move into conditions that are not very conducive. Let's get back to radar and we'll uh, can you keep an eye on that for me, Gino, yeah, please? I'll, I'll watch it. And let me know if we need to go back there uh, at, at a moment's notice. We'll uh, certainly do that. So a live look again at the radar as Gino is still uh, having a good time with uh, <laughs> with the camera. So we've got a couple of different areas where I'm going to be focused in on. And so we've got, the, again, the warning continues until 445. I do want to bring you back out. Let's talk about the fact that I know you're like, well, wait, Walworth County, I'm not there. I'm over here. I'm over here. We're not going to forget you where you are either. So we're watching this all across southeastern Wisconsin. The thing that stands out, of course, is the polygon, that uh, tornado warning that goes until 445. Let's run a couple of storm tracks on this in those areas where we're seeing that. Literally, we're right here looking at the storm. That's right. It's literally just really, really close uh, to where Lake Lawn Resort is right now. And it's moving to the northeast at about 30 miles per hour. So that will bring in places like Elkhorn, Elkhorn High School heads up there, 433, 434, into Spring Prairie at 447. Lyons at 451. East Troy at 453. East Troy High School at the same time, which is pretty much East Troy High School is right in East Troy. Makes sense. All right, you can see, again, this is moving to the northeast. Let's bring this off. Let's head back. I want to go, we haven't looked at rotation for a little bit. And we're going to do that. I'm going to put this into motion, though, and watch as anything that stands out. 
kind of washing itself out in terms of, of, of areas that looked like they were rotating a little bit better just to even the last couple of minutes or so. Uh, but let's see what we've got as we take you into the storm itself with our Doppler wind product. Watching here East Troy, this is outside of that rotation by a long way of what we were showing you with that wall cloud that we had live uh, from Delavan. That's what's moving through there. But in East Troy, I'd be ready for some stronger winds as this other area. This is not rotating. It's just regular strong winds going to come through. We'll see how strong that gets. Let's bring it back down a little bit closer in here, see if there's any additional uh, rotation that I'm seeing, it's, it's pretty washed out uh, as this is moving through. How's that picture looking, Gino? Yeah, the picture uh, it does appear that the wall cloud's starting to recede a little bit back up into the cloud base, as we we're talking about here, just uh, looking at the radar. Even on, uh, on Rex 2, on uh, the second weather computer, just wanted to show over the last couple scans, so we can see how we had a lot of this nice rotation right here, that, that classic hook echo. But then watch what happens as we go. This is from about uh, 410. Watch what happens in about 15 minutes or so. You see how that classic signature starts to fall apart. And, and this is the question that we have been asking ourselves. How is the storm going to hold itself together as it continues to move further and further northward? up towards, um, oh, and it looks like they uh, just adjusted the uh, polygon. Uh, looks like here they're going to continue the warning until 445, um, you know, 427. Severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located near East Troy. Our Delvin camera has been showing that. Uh, and, you know, if you are near the path of the storm, you clearly want to take shelter. That being said, the latest radar indications have been showing that the storm is weakening in terms of rotation, perhaps just turning into more of that straight line uh, wind gust threat mark. Yeah, and I think that's what yeah, you and I talked about this as we were getting ready to maybe ramp into coverage like this. Where will that warm front go? Right. And that was everything, is how far north that warm front is going to get. Let's bring it back into radar. I know you look at some of these colors, you're like, I don't know what those colors mean. We're going to give you the broad view, show you what's happening around all of southeastern Wisconsin. And does it mean that you're not going to get anything here in those areas that are north of the front. No, we're still going to get thunderstorms. We could still get hail producing thunderstorms in Waukesha, Milwaukee, and all of southeastern Wisconsin is likely going to see some type of thunderstorms rolling through, whether it's late this afternoon or early this evening. We're waiting for the cold front to arrive, and that will move through, and that will continue to kick off more thunderstorms. But the tornado threat, the area that with the spin, it was all about where that warm front was and is, and as this moves into more unfavorable air mass, meaning that it doesn't have the moisture to play with and it doesn't have those warm temperatures, thunderstorms like warm temperatures, and you know where they're going to find them? They're actually going to find them aloft. These storms will be their surface based at the moment, but they'll actually then feed off the warmer air that is aloft, and so you can still get the thunderstorms going, you can still get some hail, and you can still get some wind as well. So would not be surprised to see additional warnings being issued. I'm not sure that there'll be tornado warnings, though, as we work our way. It, we still have decent conditions in terms of some surface conditions where we could see things kick a little bit more with a little bit of rotation into western Racine County, western Kenosha County. That's where the temperatures are much warmer. You can see that's where the warm front actually made its way through. Wanted to show you all the lightning, and you're certainly hearing a ton of thunder. Bring it inside. When the thunder roars, get indoors. We want to make sure that you're safe. Lightning is not something you want to mess with. It's always dangerous no matter what. And so just stay inside. You should be all right as this comes moving in. So far, no warnings here in Waukesha County, where certainly you're going to have that thunderstorm rumble into your area. There's, I don't see it being able to hold those surface characteristics, meaning that the possibility of a thank you, as I just happened, if we've got a new severe thunderstorm warning that has just been issued for Waukesha County uh, until 515, also includes northwestern sections of Racine County. Uh, so no surprise that we're seeing that uh, extension but not as a tornado warning. Again, for Waukesha County, we'll stop this. For Waukesha County, this is 
moving into, and again, northwestern uh, sections of Racine County. That severe thunderstorm warning goes until 515. Bigger threats here now will be large hail and damaging winds. And speaking of that hail, we can see our hail swath of where we've had some pretty big hail already. Those deep purple shades, that's usually an indication that we're at least one inch size hail and we'll probably get some hail damage. This will be heading towards McGuanago. This is moving over East Troy right now. You probably hear some of that hail, certainly have the very heavy rain happening as we speak. So again, the tornado warning itself does continue until 445, that's in Walworth County. Uh, but we'll see as this makes its way away from the more favorable air, I'll take you in and we'll show you what we're talking about. The more favorable air is where we've got these temperatures that are in the 60s and the 70s. Look at the contrast that we have just in our area alone. 44 in Sheboygan, it's 45 in Milwaukee. Of course, the influence of the lake playing into this right now. 67 degrees in Burlington, 65 degrees in Lake Geneva, 65 in Wheatland. So we've got all this warm air. We've got enough moisture. The warm front made its way just over the state line. So it made its way north. We have these dew points that made their way into somewhat favorable territory uh, most of the time. We, we talk about dew points in the 60s when we have severe weather. But if you remember when we had the tornadoes back in February, uh, that was kind of a similar situation. Uh, we didn't have very high dew points. Back to radar we go. And... Uh, We'll get the big picture again and show you what's happening around all of southeastern Wisconsin. If you're in Waukesha, I'm not saying that you necessarily need to take shelter, but you need to be prepared for the possibility of some bigger hail and maybe some damaging winds moving into your location as well. We'll run a storm track on this entire area here. Uh, moving out of Walworth County, extending to the northeast about 30 miles per hour. East Troy, pretty much right now in the next minute or so. Uh, then hitting McWanago 451, Big Bend, uh, or Vernon at five o'clock, Big Bend at 503 into Muskego at 510. So if you're in any of those areas, uh, just be ready, not necessarily for tornadoes, but for the possibility of large hail. Here's the thing, if you're in Waukesha right now, if you're in these areas, Vernon, Big Bend, down to Muskego, McWanago, if you have a garage and your car's not in the garage, I'd hurry up, go get the car, go throw it in the garage, keep it from getting hail damage if you can, because that's no fun. Uh, but the storms themselves, let's turn lightning back on. There's still going to be plenty of that. They're still going to be going. And this, this goes back for a, a little ways here out to the west of us. And as we uh, put this into motion, watch as these storms moving northeast at 30 miles per hour, uh, certainly going to be going for a long time. There's some good things that are happening here in terms of seeing some rainfall because we really dried things out. Our fire danger has been pretty high. Uh, so, Gina, why don't you give an update yeah. on that uh, new warning? So that new warning is, uh, you know, for that 60-mile-per-hour wind gust, we've got that going until uh, 515. This thunderstorm could have the capability of 60-mile-per-hour wind gusts. Also, it is moving at 40 miles per hour up to the northeast with quarter-size hail possible. You can see that thunderstorm closely moving up to the northeast as we speak. Also, so the other thing that I've been watching is the current rotation potentially uh, from that tornadic thunderstorm. And what I can tell you is that there's actually some benefit uh, what we've been looking at here. This is the Delvin Cam and that wall cloud that just a few moments ago looked very deceiving has now retreated back up into the storm base. That strong rotation that we were seeing earlier is now starting to fall apart a little bit. And the storm is starting to uh, transfer over into more of a straight line wind and also some uh, some small hail as well, upwards of about a quarter. So that could clearly make some damage. It's not something you want to be outside and, you know, taking some photos of. You want to be inside in an interior part of your house, away from windows and doors. Wait for that storm to move out of here before uh, perhaps maybe to take a, take a look at hopefully no damage. But if you do have any, uh, to take a look at damage after the fact. But, yeah, that storm's complex. And also another thing. 
thing, Mark, you know, we're looking at these two storms right now that are in our area, but we also have more thunderstorms down south across, uh, you know, towards Roscoe, just uh, south of the border. That whole cluster of storms still has yet to impact and move across the state line. So while we do have these two thunderstorms uh, that are north of the state line right now that are the most concerning, it's not completely done just yet because we still have this broken line continuing to move up to the northeast at about 30 to 40 miles per hour and eventually will work its way in to not just Milwaukee but along the entire lakeshore. So from Delphin, Burlington, down towards Caledonia, Racine, Kenosha, uh, you know, this is the early part of the evening, and we'll have to continue to monitor this as we head into the later evening hours, how this line of thunderstorm evolves as it continues to push through, Mark. Uh, thank you very much. You know, it's kind of inter interesting when you have a chance to kind of get a, a broader view. You step back and you look at this. Look at that one storm that's moving out of Illinois, uh, moving very quickly, actually, uh, to the north. This is a little outside. Now, these areas here... They haven't been worked over yet. The atmosphere is still fairly ripe, conducive for the possibility of these stronger storms. Uh, and you know what? We showed you that great camera vantage point uh, from Delavan. It, it's wonderful to have a camera network so we can go all around southeastern Wisconsin. But I want to take us into Waukesha, uh, see what's going on there. We'll take you into Carroll University. Gino, if you have a chance, you want to wing yeah. this camera around sure. at some point. Obviously, we like watching the kids at campus. You want to bring it inside, though, pretty quickly. You are under a, a severe thunderstorm warning, so keep that in mind. Let's also go out to New Berlin, uh, our camera located there, and watching as these, it will get much, much darker as these storms come in. Temperatures, though, because of the lake, have really cooled things down near Lake Michigan. Let's get a live look outside from our camera located here at WISN. Well, maybe we won't. Let's go to Brady Street and we'll show you what's happening here. Looking out to the west, there's Brady Street, watching to see if we have any of these showers and thunderstorms, which they will make their way all the way into the metro area. We are far from being done with a storm. And the, the main event, of course, continues to be the tornado warning. I'm kind of watching lightning to see if we're losing some of the intensity, and it does look like a little bit here on the northern side of this. And this storm, the one that was, is tornado warned, looks like it's washing out a little bit. I'm going to zoom you in back into that storm itself. Uh, more hail producing probably there just in the northwest of Delavan. So, Delavan, you're not done. These storms are going to come go one after another after another. A storm here, we'll, we'll show radar on this again, uh, but just by looking at radar on this, I'm, I'm not impressed. I'm not as worried that we're seeing uh, the rotation that we had certainly before, why we had this issued as a tornado warning, because it looked a lot more impressive earlier. Now, even that uh, strong wind signature that we had into East Troy, uh, just west of East Troy, that's kind of dissipated as well. And so as we show you those, that warning does continue, though, for about another five and a half minutes or so. The new warning and now another. Yeah, you just saw that. Just new saw warning. that pop in. Yep. A yeah. new severe thunderstorm warning uh, that goes until uh, 515. 515. Thank you. 60 uh, mile Gina. per hour wind gusts and uh, quarter size hail with the storm. It's uh, moving up to the northeast at 30 miles per hour, which is just what we were saying when I was showing radar. Let's uh, take a look at where we've got the hail. Uh, and these dark purple shades, that's when we had some pretty big hail. Um, that new warning there into parts of Walworth County, watching this area in here. Let's go back out to radar here, and we'll describe what I'm talking about. Probably take it back out to that camera again uh, in Delavan as well uh, to see what we can get in terms of this dark cloudiness. <laughs> it's still very dark for sure. That's Delavan Lake, by the way, what you're looking at here. Uh, and you can see those dark skies. If you're in Delavan, I know you already had that the wall cloud that was coming in. You probably were a little concerned about that. But don't let your guard down because now you're probably getting hail-producing storms uh, working their way uh, toward you. And that's why there's the new warning that has been issued. And now notice how dark those clouds are, again, uh, from our vantage point there in Delavan. That's the new warning. The that's the only other severe thunderstorm warning is the one for Waukesha northwestern sections of Racine County. Uh, we'll 
put a stop on this. I want to run a couple of storm tracks on these things. Uh, the one that's producing the hail right in here, uh, let's run a storm track on that. We'll bring that in that whole area in here, through here, moving to the northeast at about 30 miles per hour. So here's the thing. The areas that have the tornado warning now, you've had some rain and you've had probably some strong winds, but you got a whole nother line that's coming in. The next area is still going to be hitting you. Delavan right now, East Troy at 511, East Troy High School 514. So these are continuing to make their way to the northeast. I'm watching is this, again, this area in here is still warm. It's still got plenty of moisture to play with. And so we'll see if it can stay conducive for any kind of rotation or if this just becomes storms that are producing hail and maybe outside of that a little bit of wind as well. So let's bring the uh, storm track off. We'll take this off and just kind of get an idea of where we're at right now. Waukesha, you probably have a little bit of light rain moving into your area right now, but that's not the main event. Back to that uh, ominous looking sky for sure. And for what's, what we're looking at, this is looking to the southwest of Delavan. Uh, and you can see we've still got some, some pretty dark clouds for sure. This is, though, more hail producing now, that storm that you see there. This is what we're watching here. The tornado warning continues for another two and a half minutes. The warning in Waukesha, if you're in the city of Waukesha, you're wondering, okay, what am I going to get? You're going to get some rain. You're going to hear the thunder for sure, probably hear that already, and you're going to get plenty of lightning and probably get some hail out of this. That's likely going to be the biggest concern. Could get some stronger winds as well. But your, as these storms move over here, they're moving out of that better environment, what they've been sitting in, where we've had temperatures that are much, much warmer. We have more moisture to play with. And so that new warning... That's in the other parts of Walworth County. So there's a, a lot going on. We continue to watch this. So this is going to continue to move its way towards Milwaukee. If you're in Milwaukee, you're like, okay, am I going to get hit? The answer is yes. You are definitely going to see some rain. Let's put lightning back on this as well, and we'll put this into motion. You can watch as these storms. Notice the areas that they're, you're going to get a lot of rain out of this too. So we are going to get some gully washers here, probably picking up a good half inch to an inch of rain in some of these locations as it continues to work its way pretty much right up I-43 now. So this has missed you by a tiny bit in Elkhorn so far, but you're not going to get missed by the other ones. Right up I-43, this is going to make its way right into southeastern Waukesha County. You're going to, if you're in Vernon, Big Bend, if you're Muskego, if you're on Little Muskego, Big Muskego Lake, that's going to, you're going to get hit by these storms as they move in. Then it's going to make its way into Milwaukee County. Am I thinking it's going to be severe? That's not necessarily true. What I am concerned about is there going to be a lot of lightning on this, and it's coming at a time when a lot of you are going to be on the roads, and it's going to be probably a little slow on that evening commute. So Greenfield, Greendale, Franklin, extending on over to St. Francis and Oak Creek, Cudahy, working your way back up to Bayview, into downtown Milwaukee, West Milwaukee, uh, West Dallas. You are also going to be seeing this. There's not as much lightning as there was earlier on this, again, as these storms will likely transition. But we still got some pretty nasty storms that are going as we speak here into parts of Walworth County. We'll take lightning back off, and you can see what the latest is on that. We're almost done with the tornado warning. Gino, how yep. about an update from you? Yeah, so I was just swinging around the Waukesha cam, as you're talking about, and we do have some of that rain that's starting to move in, kind of dissipate a little bit of that visibility uh, from Carroll University. You could see some of that rain banding moving in here, as expected, because we do have some moderate intensity rainfall and perhaps some uh, thunder included with that. Another thing I wanted to uh, show, jumping back, I wanted to switch over to the radar. Uh, there is... On top of the storms that we have here, as we continue to discuss about those additional thunderstorms that are further down to the south, um, we are concerned about more of that activity moving down, uh, moving up to the north as well. I wanted to zoom back out, and there's multiple tornado warnings still in northwest Illinois, and we'll continue to see because all these storms are interacting with that warm front boundary, and that's causing a little bit of that rotation. So as they continue to move up to the north, eventually into southeast Wisconsin, especially as we get towards nightfall, we'll once the you. sun is starting to set down, 
are we going to still see the strongest of your thunderstorms as we're seeing right now? We'll zoom right back and closer look here. Uh, we'll clear that out. Uh, it does appear at the moment uh, that the tornado warning did get expired. It is now 446, so in, uh, a minute after the expiration. Um, you know, and uh, National Weather Service, you know, they said they're looking at the south side of East Troy uh, for any concern of, you know, a big wall cloud. But right now, uh, as we've been talking about it on Airmark, that rotation has diminished and we're kind of focusing more towards that hail and damaging wind threat. Yeah, and thankfully we made it through. The tornado warning is done. That doesn't mean that we're out of the woods entirely. And again, we've got that severe thunderstorm warning that extends pretty much through all, uh, almost all of Walworth County, at least the northern half of Walworth County. It extends into Waukesha, includes the city of Waukesha, right up to uh, pretty much I-94, parts of Pewaukee into this as well, and then just to the west of Elm Grove and Brookfield, uh, and then extending down to the south again towards Muskego. McGuanago included in this as well. We'll stop this, and so then we can see those warnings that we have right now. Again, these are severe thunderstorm warnings. Watching these closely, we're still in the midst of 12 News at 4 o'clock. I'm going to send it back to Derek and Kristen, uh, and they're going to kind of head us back to the news. If we have a tornado warning, we're right back on the air. We're going to let you know what's happening again but at this point no rotation anywhere that makes us concerned that we're seeing any other types of tornadoes or at least potential tornadoes what we are going to be deal dealing with though is the potential for some hail lots of lightning and some strong winds so a lot more coming up on that all right mark and gino both of you, thank you all so much. And also, this is a reminder too, to download our 12 News app. That way you can get those push alerts to keep you and your family safe as weather rolls into our area. All right, we'll be right back after a short break.